Okay, we got everything uh, properly torqued down. All of our nuts now, all the way around, are torqued down to 80 foot pounds per uh, Hutchinson's recommended specs. And at this point, we are ready to insert the valve stem back in, tighten it up, and uh, reinflate. So, again, just any type of valve stem removal tool should work. And you're going to want to take your, your valve stem here and gently insert it back in. screw it back into place. And you don't want to over torque this, but just make sure it's snug. When the stem itself itself starts kind of torquing a little bit, you know it's it's tight. And as a recommendation, this is again per Hutchinson, as well as a lot of other split rim manufacturers, they normally recommend it's, uh, it's, it's kind of at your discretion as to how far you want to go with the safety measures, but for a split rim design, just to ensure, because they have had some pretty, pretty nasty accidents with these split rims, if they're not properly torqued down or if something just bizarre happens, um, there's a lot of pressure inside this tire, and the only thing keeping you from, uh, from seeing that pressure are the bolts and, and whatnot. So for safety reasons, We're going to go ahead and make use of a tire cage and again, this is kind of at the discretion of the individuals that are, that are assembling these things. Um, you can take it down to a shop and make use of theirs or you can pick up your own. Um, this is a pretty, pretty basic cage set up for some fairly wide tires as you can see but the idea is essentially you're gonna you're gonna put the tire and the rim inside here while it's being inflated in order to ensure that uh, everything is going to inflate properly and you're not going to have any issues with with the rim coming apart in it because again if it does there's a lot of pressure in there and you could have some serious injuries as a result so I'm kind of turn sideways here to give you a better idea Just pop down these Locking brackets. And we're going to take the take the tire and we're going to slide right in between here, and it kind of balances right in between the two bottom pieces of steel there. And essentially, this is a safety mechanism designed that, in the event that the rim does come apart, that this will minimize the impact as far as outward projectiles or anything that's going to come off and potentially do damage. Same with the other side. So in this position, what we're going to do is we're going to move the, the stem to the side here so we can get to the stem. And again, you know, if you, if you don't have the air compressor handy or whatever, you can take it down to any local shop and they can probably get this done for you as well. Um, the, the one thing that may, they may not have is the the safety cage and, and some shops will refuse to work with split rims just for safety reasons but uh, again it's, it's at your discretion what what you feel comfortable doing uh, at this point basically we're just going to air it back up I normally run this particular combination the wheels are set up for a maximum pressure of 60 pounds so um, you don't want to go beyond that just because it's beyond the specs of the rim not to say that you can't but uh, I don't recommend it when I initially got these these tires, the uh, the Interco tires, the, the Trexus MT in particular, it's uh, it's got the tread on the top here is, is fairly soft, and I found that my ride was a little more controlled and a, and a little better um, in terms of just just manageability by airing these things up to about 60 pounds, which uh, under different circumstances, unless it's a, an E-rated tire, is is pretty hard. But in these particular ones, it, it worked pretty well, and it was a pretty stable combination. So. I'm going to go ahead and air these up to 60, at least for the initial uh, probably 3,000 miles on them until they get worn out a bit, and then I normally go 40 to 45, depending. And that's it. Um, pretty much the assembly in, in its completion. It's not too bad. Like I said, the, the worst parts are probably the uh, getting that internal beadlock in place, 
and ensuring that your, uh, your internal O-ring between the two rims stays in place while you're trying to, to assemble to make sure you don't get that pinched in between. So normally uh, I go ahead and air up and I'll let these sit for a day or so and just kind of monitor them and, and see what my air pressure looks like. And normally within the 24 hours if you do have a leak because of a, a pinched O-ring or, or other issue, you're going to know it because you're going to lose air. Um, and if they're holding air after a day or two, it's, uh, you're, you're more than likely good to go. That's all there is to it. Thank you for watching.